a nice day to be doing a painting. Lots of nice snow so you can't go outside. So let's do a really nice painting so we can stay in and relax and not have to go out with all this winter weather. So here we are back in our nice warm studio ready to do a beautiful painting. So here is the beautiful painting we are going to do today. Really pretty landscape with flowers. Pretty flowers. Nice composition. Isn't that pretty? And it's very easy. I'm going to show you all the steps now that we were going to take to do this beautiful painting. You might be wondering where I got my idea. I got my idea off Pixabay. That's a royalty-free website where you can get free pictures. And this uh, was inspired by a picture on Pixabay. So let's get started. I'm just using some really nice paints today. These nice big two paints by Dahmer and Rowney. And they are really nice thick paints. And the only paints I'm going to use today is white and ultramarine blue and red and yellow. And we're going to mix all our colors from those three primary colors plus white. And these are the brushes that I'm going to use today and that's a Filbert. And that one is a size 12. Now, like I say, all brands have different sizes, so it's hard to tell you the sizes. Just make sure it's a medium, depending on the size of your canvas. I'm using 11 by 14 canvas today. This one here is a 9 by 12 that I did the painting on. I also have another filbert brush. It's a smaller version, and it um, could be a size paint all over it, so it's hard for me to see the size, but it's smaller. Probably a size 6. And then I have um, an angular brush, any angular brush, and I have a bristle brush, it's flat, or it can be a filbert, as long as it's, it's um, bristle, the bristles are sticking out. The um, Filberts that I just showed you here, they're uh, made of uh, synthetic or nylon, whatever you have there. And I also have a round brush with a pointy top, if you have one of those. If you don't have this stuff, don't worry, we will come up with different brushes that you can use. And I also have a liner brush. So get all your materials together, and that way you won't have to stop and go look for stuff and that's a flat and these are also synthetic or nylon and it's a chiseled edge and also you might want to have a toothpick okay a toothpick is good to have or something with a sharp edge on it sharp pointy stiff edge you can even have a stylus it has no brush on it just a pointy edge there Okay, so that's the materials you need, and of course your jug of water and your paper towels, your paper plate, your palette, and we will get started. Now the first thing you want to do is put your tape on, just so we have an idea where we're going to do the sky and the water, and we'll have um, a horizon line, so we'll work with a horizon line. So we leave enough room for our sky and a few little trees up here, which is about a third, so thirds. And then you can do that. So all you have to do is get some white paint and some blue. We don't want the sky to be too dark, we want it nice and bright. And we'll put on some of that first, okay? Just go back and forth, make a nice sky. If you need more paint, go get it. Good. 
just put that sky on there. Nice long strokes will help. Nice strokes to fill up your fill in the spots back and forth. Good. If you have trouble getting the paints to move, just mist mist your canvas so it's a bit damp, okay? And that will help the paint spread more. Okay. So get lots of paint on your brush, lots of white, lots of blue, so that you double load your brush, lots of paint. That will make it so much easier to move. Good. Just get that on there. Get our sky on. Good. You're putting your sky on until you get it smooth. You don't want any streaks. You don't want any streaks. Go back and forth, back and forth, long strokes. Now this time you're going to take some white and a bit of blue and you're going to add a tiny bit of red. All right. And that will give it a nice color there. Good. Keep putting on your paint. And if your paint is all wet, everything will blend really nice, okay? So you can even go back off into your blue again and come on down. That way it'll all blend together. Nice. Good. Here we go. Just come along. Just keep your paint moving. Nice, beautiful sky. I'm going right up into my sky again. I'm, as long as it's all wet, you can go up into your sky, long strokes so that you don't get any white of the canvas coming through. And get all the paint on so it all blends really nice. Good. Back and forth, back and forth. If you scrub it on first, as long as it's wet, then you can go back and forth, long strokes to let it all blend. I'm going to put a little bit of red down here. Just put a little bit of red there, almost a pinkish color. I'll put that down here in the middle. And back and forth, back and forth. And you can even go right up into your sky, it's okay. You'll still keep your blue. Good. That's a pretty sky. Now we'll put a few clouds in the sky. So with the same filbert brush, just put a little bit of white on the top of your filbert brush. See? And then just touch and wiggle. That'll wiggle out a little cloud for you. See that? It'll wiggle out a little cloud. So then you can pick another spot, touch and wiggle. Just wiggling out some nice little clouds. Get more paint if you need it, depending on how many clouds you want. Wiggle it out. See, and it'll give you a little spot. Now, whatever's left over on your brush, just touch and move and wiggle. 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 Touch and move. Get more paint if you need to. Not too much, because you're only trying to put a few distant clouds there. Touch and move and wiggle. Good. Just little indications of clouds in the sky. Good. Now with your filbert brush again, just clean it off. And 
let's make some green okay so we'll just take some blue and some yellow and we'll make a nice green we'll have it it's okay to have a little dark you can add a little more yellow if you don't want it too dark let's just make it a medium green over here we'll keep the dark green for some shadows all right, so it's yellow and blue make green. Or you can use a green that's already there for you if you have a sap green or a leaf green or any kind of green, a medium green would be nice. And we'll just put on a streak of green right on top of that. On top of your tape and that will help you get a nice straight line there. Alright, some more green. Go over it a couple of times till you get what you want. This is going to be a little bit of grass in front of the trees that you're going to make. There we go. And if you need to do two coats, well we'll be going over it a couple of times anyway, so we'll be fine. Touch and pull. Touch and pull. There we go. Nice. Now this time we're going to use our bristle brush. Okay, it's only a small one. Um, like I said, depending on the size of your canvas, this could be a size six. Uh, like I say, it's giving you the sizes. Um, just think small, medium, and large because giving you the sizes. All the brands are different. So I'm just tapping into some blue. I'm going to tap into some yellow to make a nice dark green. We're going to put some trees back here on top of that nice green valley that you made. And just tap some different shapes. All right, got it. Let's see if I can get a closer view for you. So tap on top of the green you already made and make some different shapes shape them up so come across and move up and over up and down some more paint so we want to keep our shadows there make sure you're if you have sap green that's really nice it's a nice dark green so make it up and down good keep it going Let's go and get some more greens in there. So I'm just tap, 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 tapping. I'm coming over. And I am going back in to make some shadows. And making some different heights. Because right, you don't want all the trees to be the same height. You want to have some different... different heights okay we're gonna have some shadows there to make those trees stand out so we have to go back in again to make some shadows go for it so you either mix blue and yellow together to make green or you just get whatever you have there any dark greens would be nice and there we go good let's take our smaller filbert brush and let's smooth out the bottom of that where we put the grass. Smooth it out so that I know when you go and put your trees on, it's all going to go down on top of that grass. So you want it to smooth out. Nice, good. See? Yeah. Now when you get that done, the trees can be dry or wet, okay, uh, for this part. We're going to highlight the trees. Now, let's get a bit of yellow. Just tap into some yellow, add a little bit of green. We don't want that yellow to be too bright, but we want it to be bright enough to have some nice highlights. But those trees are supposed to be far away, so if they stand out too much, you'll end up making them look too close. 
So on the very top of what you did, don't touch the bottom, don't touch the bottom, just the top, just the top, see that? All right, just the top, because you don't want to lose what you just did, all right? So let's just go only at the top, and that'll make your trees a little bit higher, a little brighter on the top, okay? Touch into it a little bit, but not much. All right, so keep going at the very top of that tree. Just the top. See how pretty that makes it? So, that gives it a nice effect when you do it that way, see? So as you can see, see those trees, how pretty they are? because I, I went a dark first and then I put the yellow on top I want to blur up on you there we go see all the way across so you got your darks and your mediums and your lights which is your three values now next we'll take our tape off, there we go, and we're going to do the whole bottom of the canvas even though we have all this stuff going on down here. We want to do a background first, okay, so we'll do our water next. So we'll get out your filbert brush again, or a flat brush, it's up to you, flat would be nice. Make sure your brush is clean because you want to get the reflection of the sky into the water. So we'll do basically the same as what we did on top. We get lots of white and blue. Nice and bright. Okay, we don't want it too dark. And we'll just do the whole bottom here. Good. Keep putting that paint on. Get up underneath there. That's why you need a flat chisel edge brush so you can get under here without, you know, trying to keep your straight line. So if you got a chisel edge brush, that's really good for those things to uh, get around straight lines. There we go. Underneath here. Good. Underneath here. We're going to be darkening that for a little shadow underneath here. Alright, so we'll do that after. So when you're doing a painting, decide where you want to start and how you want to start, okay? And the way I do my paintings could be different the way you rather do yours. You might want to draw all that out first and then work around everything. If you want to do it that way, it takes a bit longer, but you know, if you want to get, you probably get it more accurate. See your drawing first. Okay. But the way I like to do it is I like to get all my background done first and then put everything on top of that. Good. Okay, keep painting your water. Now if you're finding that the synthetic or nylon brushes won't move your paint good, well get the brush that I use, the, the one inch bristle brush. That's the bristle brush I was telling you about, the one that I signed. Right? Like I said, you can go look for, for those in your retail stores or your hardware stores. But it has to be nice bristles like this, where they're not completely flat. They have to be separated. And I think it's natural bristol. And well, I sign them in case somebody wants me to send it to them just for a souvenir too, you know, for a bit of fun. And I find that that is spreading the paint so much better than the nylon brush. Look. 
I was having a hard time and I was like, what's going on? And I realized that it's the brush. It just wouldn't spread the paint. So the bristles, what I just found out was or are the best way to spread your paint. Okay, so if you have any problems, switch from nylon to bristle. Now, let's get started again. I'll add a little bit of red to that. Just so we can have a bit of a reflection from the sky. There we go. See, that's so much better. It's flowing so much better. Good. What a difference. I didn't even really realize because I normally used a bristle, but I said, doing the video, I must try the, uh, the nylon brush or synthetic and it wouldn't spread. And I was like, what's going on? Just these bristle brushes are amazing. Makes your life so much easier when you got good brushes. They're only cheap, you know. At your hardware store, you should still get them cheap. The only thing is, if I had, if you wanted one, I'd have to ship it to you. Then I gotta charge you for shipping, and I, I hope you can find them uh, in your stores. But if you can't, just let me know, and I'll do my best to get it to you. Now the next thing we want to do is get the bristle brush here again because like I say it flows good but it's not going to make a good straight line for me so the best thing that I'm going to do is use this brush to get it started. Now you can use, let's get a nice dark green. All right, And we'll put that right across the whole bottom just the bottom. Now you can tape that off if you want to get a straight line. I'm just going to put that grass on the bottom here. Look at the beauty of that brush. It gives all these different textures to your grass. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now I got plastic down there to, to protect my new easel, but it's just in the way sometimes. Okay. So we'll go back over that again. I'm going to use my um, nylon or synthetic brush, my filbert, or flat if you have a flat. And I'm going to put some more green over that to darken it. So just mixing up my blue. Like I say, we got uh, sap green there. Be nice. All right, but these, this blue and yellow makes such a beautiful green. I'm having a hard time going back to the uh, already made colors. I like making my own colors. All right, might have to wait for that to dry. Let's wait for that to dry. If you can't get the second coat on, and. Just for fun, I'm going to try my bristle brush again, just to see if the dark will go over that. I like to experiment with my brushes just to see what works and what don't. So, I'm just going to try my bristle brush now because it's still wet and I can't get the filbert to go back over it and make dark colors. So I'm going to try this one. Here we go. Not bad. So what we'll probably have to do is wait for that to dry and then do a second coat. There we go. That's what we'll do. We'll wait for it to dry and see if that is easier to work with. So it's good to experiment and uh, we're experimenting together so that's good. You might want to make that bottom one just a little bigger I think. Let's see. Yeah that one there is kind of bigger isn't it? All right let's do that. Let's let's widen it out a little bit. All right. More paint. I'm using my filbert again and I'm going to widen that out a bit more. There we go. See how the paint won't come off? Now I got that blocked with paint. Just look. 
I'm just going to black it off with paint. I'm doing this to show you the different ways different brushes work. Might as well learn as much as we can. Look, it just keeps coming off. It's just sliding. It's sliding across the canvas. The paint won't come off. It just slides through and it won't come off. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing that it won't come off like that. So now I'm just going back and forth making a mess. So I'm going to try my other brush again. Bristle. Okay. Try that. And then if that doesn't work, then we'll wait for it to dry and then we'll put some more on. So this is a great way to, to try different things. All right. So let's touch and pull, 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 pull. It's a nice difference. The paint is, is coming off the brush. It is coming off the brush. The other way it wouldn't come off the brush. I don't know why. It must be the material, I guess. So let's keep doing that. Look how nice that's coming out. Beautiful. Because now you got your darks and your lights. Nice. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I'm going to put some a uh, little bit of yellow there in the center because a bit of light. There's light coming in here, probably from the right a little bit. Let's say it's coming from the right. So I'll put a little bit of yellow in the center here. We'll adjust the light as we go along. I'm going to add a little bit of white too, just to brighten it up a bit more. Make sure all your paint is wet while you're doing this, okay? You can either wait and let it dry to put on extra coats, or you can work with it while it's wet as long as your brush is working for you. If your brush is not working for you, then switch brushes from synthetic to bristle, because the paint comes off the bristles much better than they do with the synthetic. Nice, there we go. Now. And the beauty of that brush is the bristles are separated so they will spread the paint so that you get to keep some of your shadows. The brush does all the work for you. Great. Good. Alright, we may lighten that up again in a little while. Now that your paint is almost dry, pick up some yellow and Nice bright yellow and it can be cad yellow or it can be light yellow. Whatever yellow you have there. And just drag that along here. We can brighten that up a little bit. Works a little better when it's dry. Add a little white to brighten it up again. There we go. Good. Good, good, good. So lighten it up as much as you want here. And so a little bit of a difference in the middle there.